Hi, my name is Tim, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot a faulty reversing valve solenoid or coil on the heat pump simulator. Now, this is the reversing valve right here, and this is really what makes a heat pump a heat pump. And it has the capability of changing the refrigerant flow, causing the hot gas to be diverted to the outdoor coil during heating or to the indoor coil during cooling. So to begin with, we're going to click on the thermostat to make it call for heat. Click on the selector switch. This will turn it to the heat position, and it will also turn up the temperature setting, so you won't need to use these arrows here on the thermostat. Next, refer to the procedure guide at the top. Click OK. Next, we're going to assess which electrical loads are operating first, starting with the indoor fan motor. And if we take the cover off, we can see that the indoor fan motor is in fact running, as evidenced by the spinning blue arrows, so we're going to click yes on the procedure guide. Now we go to the outdoor unit, and I've removed the cover, and we can see that both the outdoor fan is running and the compressor is running. So we're going to click yes that the outdoor fan is running and yes that the compressor is running. Next, we want to see if the heaters are actually on. The second stage electric resistance heat should be on when the temperature is turned at least two degrees above the set point in the room. So we're going to clip our clamp on ammeter on the wire leading to the heater from the heat relay. And when we do this, we should get a current draw if the heaters are operating. And they are. We've got 30 amps, so our heaters are functioning just fine. So it appears that all of our major loads are operational. Next, we want to inspect the coil for frost. And as you can see, we've got quite a bit of frost on the coil. So yes, there is frost on the outdoor coil. This leads to a defrost-related problem. Now we're going to open the control panel here, click OK, and then take a look. Now, it's possible that we have a faulty defrost board here. Now, this defrost board has an integrated timer that will attempt a defrost cycle approximately every 90 minutes. It also has a defrost thermostat connected to it, which is mounted to the outdoor coil. Now, the defrost thermostat will only allow the heat pump to go into defrost if it senses a temperature 35 degrees or below. In other words, it's sensing frost in the coil. So it's possible we have a bad defrost thermostat. It's also possible that the reversing valve is faulty. During defrost, this defrost board will send power out of the C and double O terminals to the reversing valve, energizing the coil and changing the position of the reversing valve. This allows the discharge gas coming out of the compressor to be diverted to that outdoor coil to melt the frost, kind of like it runs in the cooling mode. Now, the reversing valve wouldn't show up as faulty during the heating mode, but it will show up during defrost mode and as well as cooling mode. Now, in order to bypass the timer mechanism inside the board as well as the defrost thermostat, the defrost boards have two little test pins on them that you can place a jumper across, or you can even short a screwdriver across the terminals for five seconds. What this will do is it'll bypass that defrost thermostat and see if the board is capable of sending the unit into defrost. So we're gonna click on that, and we're gonna place the jumper across there, and then we're gonna evaluate whether the frost melts from the coil. So after placing the jumper, click OK. And if we take a look at the coil, we can see it's not really defrosting. We don't have any melting of the frost going on. So the defrost thermostat is not our problem here. We just simply bypass that by jumping those pins. Now, while it's in defrost, after clicking no that the coil didn't defrost, while it's in defrost mode, we're going to check for 24 volts at the double O and C terminals. We want to see if that board is sending power to the reversing valve. And when we do this, we can see we do in fact have 24 volts. So the board's functioning properly. Uh, it's sending power to the reversing valve coil or reversing valve solenoid. So we're going to click yes, we've got 24. Now, our next step is to remove the cover, which we've already done. So we're going to click OK on the procedure guide, and we're going to turn the disconnect off. It's going to be necessary to measure the resistance of the reverse and valve solenoid or coil. So once you've done that, you can pretty much disconnect the wires from the solenoid and just click on it after you've turned the power off. Now, you can also disconnect them at the board, but you can disconnect them right here too. Click OK on the procedure guide, and we're going to measure for a measurable resistance or continuity across that coil, meaning we should have some type of measurable number here. A reading of OL or infinite would indicate that the coil is open. So we're going to take our leads and we're going to just drop them on the two glowing orange hot spots here at the reversing valve solenoid. And when we do this, we see we have infinite resistance or OL on the meter, and this verifies that this coil is open. And this is a pretty simple fix. 
So we're going to click OL on the procedure guide, and we're going to disconnect the wires from the control board now. And when we do this, we can replace the solenoid pretty easy. After disconnecting the wires, click OK on the procedure guide, and we're going to simply click on the reversing valve solenoid or coil to replace it, and just click Replace on the menu. And this will solve our problem. Click OK on the procedure guide. We're going to need to turn the power back on and observe one full cycle of operation to make sure all loads are functioning properly, as well as the defrost cycle. So once we've just reestablished power to the unit, click OK. And last but not least, go up to the space and ensure that heat is being delivered. And we can see it is based on the graphic of this floor register. Now, if you want to review any of the steps in this process, simply click this top left icon and you can review each step that we just took in this procedure. Good luck on your future service calls, and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Please take a second to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great videos. You can try our on-demand VR-enabled learning for HVAC by signing up for a free trial. Go to interplaylearning.com to get started.